I don't know what he's talking about with this one. Birds aren't even real. Isn't that right, Asher? Yeah, Asher's down there and he's causing a stir. He can't help himself. Yeah. So, why some birds will never see heaven? Some birds are a-holes. I mean, that's just... I mean, I don't know what else to say about that. I mean, ostriches, for instance. Ostriches and emus are the closest thing to, like, velociraptors that are on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. And those things are more likely to, like, headbutt you and kick you with their massive, like, like, tufted, like, like, dinosaur claws. There's <coughs> bird moms that'll literally <coughs> drop their egg off on another bird's doorstep and leave it for somebody else to take care of because they can't be fucking bothered. That's another thing, too. <laughs> nature's, like, nature's scary, man. There's, uh, penguins that get real X-rated and fucked up with some stuff. Yeah, that's yeah, true. It's very, very true. I mean, crows are ridiculously intelligent. And if crows you ever screw, cool, man. Well, if you screw them over, they will screw with you back. Every time I see a crow, I'm like, Hi, crow, be my friend. They never ah! Because I never have anything to offer them, unfortunately. And you're just, and there's like, ah! Like. I heard like a mm. rustling up on the porch roof while I was outside a few days ago and I was like what's that sound and I walk out and I see a fluffy black butt like and I was like crow and he's just like oh and he's like oh crow look over it flies <laughs> off he actually called that called it like I caught him and scared him he was like oh like, shit like sorry I was just curious yeah, I was just like hi crow and he's like oh fuck I've been found out <laughs> ah, ah. and he's gone and it's kind of funny uh so yeah, Casual Geographic, once again, showing us, you know, he's going to show us some clips of birds being douchebags, and you know what? That's fine. Birds can be douchebags sometimes. Canadian geese. Oh. I was going to say, all that supposed aggression that Canadians don't have, you know, it all went into the Canadian geese. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, guaranteed, like, Canadian people's like, Oh hey there, bud. How you doing today? You gonna say you're gonna go to the go to the Maple Leafs game? And maybe they're gonna win actually win a playoff series this year. Canadian geese. <laughs> and they're just yeah. the Canadian geese just absorb all negative <laughs> energy in Canada. Yeah. Yeah, but alright. We got this here. Let's check it out. This is Why Some Birds Will Never See Heaven by Casual Geographic. Let's go. This video was sponsored by World of Tanks. Oh! Damn. Just drop kicking. Birds, for the most part, spend their entire lives the same way they started. With zero regard or concept of morality and no deference toward the idea of a higher being. Basically, they're bastards with wings. <laughs> Animals don't typically operate on morality oh. because nature really doesn't care how good of a person you are. Good karma won't keep your kids from starvation and it won't stop life from slapping you in the face with an octopus. So technically, it really wouldn't be fair to judge animals based on morality. But if we could, birds would never see the light of heaven. I don't know why, but nature insisted on making sure birds survive only by inflicting pain and suffering on others, often in some of the most brutal ways possible. What? Asher. What was that about? Asher. You alright? He's fine. Well, because I have nothing better to do and this is my life now here are some birds that would score a negative on the rice purity test First we got this paralysis demon with wings the giant oh. petrol Basically take everything bad about seagulls teach it to table manners of vultures put it on steroids and you get a penguin's worst nightmare More on that later the giant petrol earned the nickname the stinker because they'll feed on any decaying rotting carcass No matter how putrid the festering meat is and just like vultures petrols prefer to violate a course by starting from the softest points of the body And normally that means the anus so when you see this overgrown graveyard pigeon in red face, it means it just got done tossing some dead elephant seal salad. The giant petrol's <laughs> nauseating. It's not a mental image I wanted to have in my head, casual. Not a not. Being mm. habits only make this next fact even worse. Because if you get too close to a nesting petrol or worse, its chick, 
It'll projectile vomit whatever disrespect was meriting down in its trash chute of a stomach. Not only is it disgusting, the puke is so acidic it can actually eat away at the waterproof coating of feathers. But that's not why giant petrels are in this video. Now nah, it's because of the flying bullies of the southern seas with an obsession with penguin chicks. The southern giant petrel will survey a penguin colony and single out any chicks it can find and then they'll proceed to snatch the chick in front of the parents who honestly don't make much of an effort in the first place. Then these flying predators will proceed to tear the defenseless chick apart and eat it alive, often while the parents can only watch. Sometimes they won't even That's attack. All giant up. petrels really need to do is sit and wait for one of the chicks to panic and make a break for it. A decision that guarantees his life won't get renewed for the next season. And unlike the skewer mafia from Happy Feet, the giant petrel can have a wingspan of up to seven feet, meaning this flying abortion can be a shack long. But they don't just go after penguins, and yes, I am censoring this for a reason. Giant petrels will also go after seabirds like the albatross and gannet, and their favorite method of soul eviction is by holding the bird underwater until it drowns. It's like a reverse baptism. They're aggressive, nasty, and they operate on a morality deficit, which makes them great at bullying penguins, but even better at World of Tanks. World of Tanks <laughs> is a free-to-play game available on PC with over good, 100 million. Good, I was going to say, good transition to, to the ad there. ...million players already online. And you have a choice of over 600 different tanks, including artillery, destroyers, light, medium, and heavy. But if you don't value the mental health of others, EBR is the fastest way to obliterate the morale of anyone you play with. EBR is like if orcas were available as high-capacity assault vehicles. They're f***ing broken, and it breaks my soul. Pick your tank, rally your teammates, and turn your competition into past tense in over 40 different battle arenas. Strategy is advised, but my mother would have raised a liar if I sat here and told her I use it. I just go for violence. You can also earn experience and pimp out <laughs> your tank. He basically woke up. He's like the he's like the lion. He just wakes up and chooses violence. Download World of Tanks using the link in the description and use a promo code TankMania and you'll get free seven days access to a premium account, two hundred and fifty thousand in credit, the premium tank Excelsior, and three rental tanks for ten battles each. I'll play this game if you have something to do in the morning. Because if you're anything like me, you'll get hooked and end up playing until 3 in the a.m. Not like I get a lot of sleep anyway. Especially when I'm carrying yeah. the knowledge of the war crimes this flying antichrist commits. Because going back to penguins, giant petrels will gang up on and bully the sick and injured to the point of exhaustion. And once the tuxedo duck can no longer defend itself, these homicidal sea chickens will tear it to pieces. Because a penguin's vital organs are protected by a layer of fat, the poor bird can be laying in sheer agony for over an hour, as merciless petrels tear chunks of its flesh out. And again, I'm sitting like this for a reason, it gets ugly. The only relief is when the penguin eventually retires from life due to loss of blood. These ice vultures will also follow fur seals on a hunt for penguins just so they can have a chance at the leftovers. And again, it really doesn't matter if it's dead or alive. Basically, giant petrels are what would happen if nature messed around and gave hyenas wings. And reminder, their wingspan can be seven freaking feet long. But these flying coffins aren't the only birds with a slightly unethical meal prep. This Hall of Fame Intimidator is the imposing Golden Eagle. Not only uh, is it one of the largest birds of prey, they have a pair of lethal weapons for feet in the form- Look at the size of them things compared to a human hand! Yep. Jesus, man! ...form of razor-sharp snare trap talons designed to grab and not let go. That and the oh. fact that this eagle is known for griefing animals heavier than they are is why this apex assault weapon has such a high hit list of possible prey. As tough as they are, they do have a weakness. Like all birds, golden eagles have hollow bones, and a fracture to one of those bones, especially in the wings, is basically a death sentence. Which is why attacking an animal that can fight back like, say, a goat, could be bad for their health. Speaking of goats, that unnatural climbing ability helps them scale to heights where most predators aren't an issue. This isn't photoshopped. They're really like that. Yeah. But of course this murder Tweety isn't most predators. Apparently nature gave golden eagles an understanding of physics because they'll attempt to latch onto the goat and manhandle it off a cliff to its death. And goats aren't pushovers. They can still critically injure the eagle on the way down, but golden eagles are strong enough to carry the goat and airdrop it straight to the afterlife. It's not just murder. It's premeditated. As brutal as it is, Jesus. it's way more efficient than chasing and wrestling a goat into submission when you could just let the goat get clapped by gravity. Chasing a goat ain't easy. Just ask this guy. Also, deer and goats aren't the only victims here. Golden eagles will also carry a tortoise and airdrop it from hundreds of feet until the shell shatters. If the tortoise survives the first time, it's no big deal. The eagle will just pick it up and try again, because it's not like the shell jockey's going anywhere. Jesus. Not only Evil bastards. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucked up. So, hey, look at that right there. That is the face of an evil bastard. Look at that, eh? There, there's nothing on this thing's mind except kill, kill, kill. Is it a bad time for a tortoise? It also might have I mean, been either that or he just leaves because... his house in the morning being like, turtle soup sounds good to do. Yeah. Yeah, he's just like, he's like, hmm. The goats are hurt grazing today. Hey, look, one's going up a cliffside. Let's push him off.
Famous Greek playwright Aeschylus was allegedly turned into a Sunday prayer after a Golden Eagle air mailed a tortoise addressed right to the back of his head. Even if he wasn't a target, it's still manslaughter. And another body on this felony Tweety's rap sheet. And you can go ahead and add a welfare fraud charge because this bird might legitimately be one of the worst mothers out there. It all starts when a mother common cuckoo gets ready to lay her egg in a so nest. Also, the Golden Typical Eagle's probably looking at his friend and he's just like, you ever had goat cheese? He's like, no. He's like, want to try it? And he's like, sure. How do you make it? And he's like, watch this. And he drops the goat off the cliff. And, he it and he's like, that's that's not goat cheese. It's the closest I can get with these. Have you ever tried to milk a goat with these? It doesn't end well. Yeah. Good to say. <laughs> the goat's going up the hill. <laughs> Eagle pulls off. Savior. <laughs> Except that's not her nest. The mother cuckoo will lay her egg <coughs> in the nest of another bird like a reed warbler and then cover her tracks by stealing and destroying one of the originals. Which means the clueless warbler ends up incubating a future criminal. Wow. Because of what I can describe as malicious design, the cuckoo egg will hatch days before the rest of the clutch does. Because even though the cuckoo chick is blind, featherless, and only a day old, it's somehow strong enough to lift an egg almost as big as itself and yeet it out of the nest and turn it into a Denny's breakfast special on the ground. And there's a good chance he does it right in front of the foster mother. But why would the warbler take care of a chick that not only isn't her blood, but actively destroyed her own? But that's easy. Gang violence. According to researchers, host parents that refused to feed the cuckoo chick ended up getting their home nest completely vandalized by the cuckoo mafia. And yes, I'm being 100% serious. Whoa. And if the warbler recognizes the imposter egg and removes it before it can hatch, there's a good chance the mother cuckoo will stop by and butcher the entire nursery. Damn. I still can't get over this picture. So now the poor warbler is forced to take care of a chick that not only isn't hers, but was probably the one that Ted Bundy'd her actual children. Not to mention a cuckoo chicken grows several times larger than a host parent, meaning the mother bird literally breaks her back trying to feed it. It's honestly one of the biggest dick moves in nature, and get this? You know the first four letters of a cuckoo's name? Yeah, that's where that term comes from. One of the most shameful genres out there was spawned by the sheer dickery of this bird. All this while the mother cuckoo sleeps at night knowing she trapped an innocent soul with a baby. It's like if Brittany Renner could fly. But what? Oh! What if Buffalo Bill had wings? Well, you'd probably get this demon right here. So at this point, there's two types of people. There's those that don't know what this is, and those that are wondering when this serial killer was going to make an appearance. For the former, this is a shrike. It's a type of passerine bird making it related to blue jays and sparrows. It's also known as the butcher bird. And that is because this tiny bird has a disturbing habit of catching and murking its prey and impaling the corpse on thorns to store in its pantry. The shrike can keep the several bodies of its victims in storage for days before they actually eat them. Oh yeah. yeah this really like Leatherface. I've heard this bird referred to as the Vlad the Vlad the Impaler bird. <laughs> That's hardcore. That's pretty wicked, dude. He even wears a black mask while he does it too. Yes. Just that is They'll even purposely wait a few days after skewering the toxic lubber grasshopper so it'll naturally degrade and become safer to eat. There's also the fact that the shrike will typically turn its prey- Look at that! Damn. In the past oh. tense by grabbing the neck and violently shaking until the neck snaps. Don't let this cover fool you. The pages of this demon dove story are riddled with psychopath tendencies and homicide in the very first degree. But at least so shrikes I've, normally kill I've heard of shrikes, but I never knew- that Yeah, dude. That. And that's crazy to me that there's an animal that straight up like, I'll stab you. Shrikes are freaking monsters. I mean, when I, this, this is the thing about, you, you know, you hear about certain animals and you're just like, oh, those are cute. And then you real you have to always remember, this is nature. Nature is not nice. And these thing and the, the thing is, we have dogs who have been bred to be more civil and more like equatable to human interaction. Same thing with cats. Let to a lesser degree than dogs. Pigs, same way. Cows, same way. Goats. Like we we have we have domesticated about a baker's dozen worth of animals in the world. Hell, buffalo, the most like insane, like, you know, a tank on four hooves that you can get in North America, and we are just now cracking like how to civilize them. Just now, with all of our modern technology, nature is not nice. And nature does not give you very many options to, like, to have things go well. Their prey before they impale it. 
Some birds choose to just swallow and let the rest work itself out. Oh. Pelicans are garbage disposals with frequent flyer miles. A pelican's diet consists of the usual fish, no surprise there. But its grocery list also includes amphibians, turtles, crustaceans, small mammals, not so small mammals, and other yeah, birds. Basically, if they think you can fit down its gullet, it's food. And you'll never guess what animal's behind me. Yeah. Holy when shit. It... Yeah, they try. When it comes to pelicans, there's two schools of thought. There's the people that think pelicans are just goofy, big-billed sea ducks. And then there's those that have seen the video of a pelican swallowing a pigeon hole with the bird visibly struggling as it was getting forced down its bottomless pit of a throat. When low on their normal food source or stressed, pelicans will resort to friendly firing other birds like pigeons, seagulls, penguins, and ducks. And since pelicans don't have teeth, we can assume this pigeon's last moments were spent suffocating as it was being digested alive by corrosive stomach acid. Not a good way to go. I don't even like pigeons, and I feel bad. But it's not just other birds. Google pelican with some random animal, and you'll probably get one either attempting to or considering attempting to eat something that they honestly have no business even making the effort to swallow. <laughs> Asher, do yeah. not go near any pelicans. Pelican swallows like, a capybara and defies all logic and common <laughs> Capybara. They have no business even making the effort to swallow. <coughs> trying to not be capybara, and the capybara is just like, bro, what are you doing? <laughs> a pelican swallowing a capybara defies all logic <coughs> and common sense, but it won't stop this walking trash can from trying. A cat could probably open up a pelican like a Christmas present, but pelicans seem to think they exist in a vacuum with no consequences. When you do something like this, it shouldn't be a surprise. Wait. Seem to think they exist in a vacuum with no consequences. Is that Vega? Sort of looks like him. He got too many spots on him to be Vega. True, true. Like, when you do Vega's something almost uh, exclusively striped. Like this, it shouldn't be a surprise when one attempts to Cardi be a human. You know, gag, choke, dangly thing back of the throat. I know that was a weird <laughs> reference. If gluttony is a sin, then this feathery Lucifer has earned a D1 scholarship to the pits of hell. And judging from the eyes, they've already been there. And if you think I'm being unfair, when I was seven, a pelican nearly gouged my eyes out and blinded me. So yeah, <laughs> them. Pelicans barely value their own Fair. lives, so of course they could care less about their children. Oftentimes, a stronger pelican chick will bully and beat the weaker sibling the past tense, usually while the parent watches in sadistic approval. And sometimes, the parents will straight up refuse to feed the weaker chick, instead letting it retire to starvation. Now, to be fair, a lot of birds do the exact same thing, but I've already made it clear I have a bias. While the Cape Gannet goes out hunting for fish, this murderous feather dumpster goes hunting for chicks. Pelicans will raid these nurseries while the parents are out to sea and devour the helpless Gannet chicks in what has to be one of the most terrifying ways to die. Imagine this being the last thing you ever see. And just to add oh. to it, because why stop now, some species will resort to cannibalism by gorging themselves with the children of their own species, because when it comes to their diet, if a Pella can, a Pella will. You just can't trust a bird that's literally related to a Jurassic reject. And yes, this dinosaur isn't a stork, it's part of the Pelican family. Hey, you remember how I made you feel bad for penguins because of the acts of terrorism this freeze-dried vulture commits? Yeah, that was on purpose. Penguins are far from innocent. In fact, they're as nasty as it gets. This little guy is an Adelie penguin, and they're honestly just formal frat boys. Just look how he's dressed. Your suit doesn't hide your sins. Adelie males will mate with literally anything. Adelie males have been seen inviting themselves onto injured females, other males, unsupervised chicks, and once again, I'm blocking this out for your mental health. Just because I have to see it doesn't mean you should. Uh. Honestly, if you have a pulse, you're its type. That wasn't even true, because once a scientist witnessed male Adelis without a partner attempt to mate with the ground. To completion, by the way. In one case, a dead penguin had been frozen over in a position that I can only assume was a little too similar to the mating posture. That was all the males needed to give the ice-chilled corpse the treatment. One scientist decided to take it even further by placing only the frozen, disembodied head of a penguin on a rock just to see how low the males could go. Apparently low enough to forever traumatize the scientist and guarantee that his therapist never has to touch store brand. Once again... <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> to completion. Jeez. Penguins aren't the only things to resort to acts of the necro. But penguins insist on being really f***ing weird about it. Adelis will sleep with anything with a heartbeat and even that's not a deal breaker. Like this would legitimately be considered a sext to an Adeli. Even the oh. Emperor Penguin isn't all that royal. Emperor Penguins have to raise children in one of the worst area codes in the world. It's so bad that if an egg rolls onto the ground unprotected for less than a minute, the chicken side is already gone. Which means by the end of the brutal four month winter, there's a lot of penguin parents with an empty nest. But not only will some attempt to fill the void by kidnapping someone else's chick, it only takes a few days or even hours for the foster parent to get bored and leave the forcefully adopted chick to die. Either by starvation or worse, by getting violated by the flying booty warrior that is the giant petrel. You see how it all comes full circle? 
Because penguins invest so much energy into one baby, losing one can drive mothers to satisfy their maternal instincts by kidnapping. But of course, this also means that once the instinct wears off like post-acorn clarity, the mother basically murders the chick through sheer negligence. And there's only one good thing about this. Next time you see a leopard seal ordering Popeyes, you won't feel as bad. Oh. And just like this penguin, this video is now over. I write, record, and edit these videos all by myself. I'm not complaining, I basically chose this. But if you'd like to support this channel for some reason, my Patreon's gonna be in the description. Becoming a patron earns you access to TikTok and YouTube videos before I post them, and even exclusive content that you won't find anywhere else. But once again, please don't feel pressure to give any money, only if you can afford it. Please feel pressure to subscribe though. It costs you nothing to hit that button, but not something might cost you your kidneys on the black market. Also follow me on Instagram so I can get verified and start DMing women for validation. There's videos and pictures and stuff, but honestly, I just want that blue check. Like, that is my entire motivation for all of this. It's not about raising awareness or making you laugh. It's about validation from strangers online. That is my one-armed man. All right, peace out. <laughs> that's that's easily one of my favorite penguin videos ever. <laughs> just yeah. a... Everybody just being like, yeah. and then fail. and then the one that fell stands up and is just like, Ugh. it's like fuck off, my butt hurts now. <laughs> yeah, pretty I'd bad. Forgotten about that clip, but that is really good. God, I remember when I first saw it, I couldn't stop laughing. I sent it to my mom and everything, and she was just she couldn't stop laughing. Yeah. <laughs> I think out of all the birds on that video, I kind of give the Shrike a pass just because that's metal as fuck. Yeah, it, I'm gonna say you should write a song about it. I probably would consider it if I ever end up in a band again. Fair enough. Oh, all right. So, actually, imagine in a fantasy scenario, like a D and D type campaign, just fighting a giant Shrike that you witness, like pick up a guard and fucking impale him on a sharp piece of stone on a cliff. Yeah. It's just like, it's just like all of a sudden, it's just like, uh, and I could just hear, I could hear Vox Machina witnessing that. And it's just like, I could just see it. Jesus like, Christ. Go, just go, you know, the, you know, the stone just goes straight up, it, like up the pooper. <laughs> and then I guarantee I could see Scanlan just be like, oh, that's too kinky even for me. Ah, God. Anyway, so yeah, this... That bird's fucked up. It, it, like, it, I don't want to fight that bird. <laughs> yeah, pretty can, much. can we not fight that bird, please? <laughs> it's like, Grog, he stole our treasures. Like, we could just get more. <laughs> I was going to say, there's a nice little truck over there. It's just like, Grog, right, fine. Well, can I at least get me a... Get me a butt protector before we go. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, so yeah, some birds will never see heaven, and I can see why. Jesus, H wept. This one was a this one was a crazy one, and I gotta be honest, I don't know what else to expect. I mean, this is this is this is Casual Geographic we're talking about. I forever tainting the view of otherwise majestic or cute animals <laughs> yeah uh, alright till next time everybody I'm Nate I'm Kate I am Nick and y'all be good people take care <laughs>